Hello everyone, this is Get Real With Work, brought to you by YQ Society. This series will be on all podcast streaming platforms and on YouTube. Please get involved and let us know what your opinions are on today's podcast. Today we'll be looking at what it's like to work in the office. We'll be exploring the work life dynamics and the huge variety you can get working in the office definitely so i have worked in an office probably most of my working life i don't know about you depends on the definition of an office <laughs> yeah go on when i was a receptionist can you class mm. that as an office technically uh, but you were in a sure. gp practice weren't you yeah so it's a different kind of office i think it's still because it's it still has that sort of office element yeah, I had exactly. If you work with a desk, <laughs> desk working in our office, that is the definition that we're going on now. Because I like my first job was obviously retail. Every student's job is a retail. I, I mean, not many people do I know who didn't start off particularly in some retrospective of retail food, or unless you're really like, oh, I can't say that. <laughs> Or most like young people start their like careers in retail or food or some sort of service job that's really easy to get. And if you did start in the office, I mean, that's great. But the norm is you start in some sort of retail. But once you get into the office, it's a complete different environment because it is so different. Yeah. Like, even just like the work life dynamics, it's so completely different. Yeah. They're working, you know, with, say with food or retail or anything like that. like first of all it's just more professional very yeah but i think that obviously mm. comes with the jobs you get whilst working in the office it will be professional mm-hmm. just like when i first started working especially in my job now let's say like that's my office job mm-hmm. completely i had no idea what to expect it was so weird when i first walked yeah. in and sat at my desk i was over the moon the fact that i had my own desk to myself and that i could like literally really? put... yeah i was like oh my god this is my own office this is my desk chair these are my computers i can oh, like have whatever screen, like background i wanted on my computer cute. i can even put like a little picture up i can put a candle i can bring Whatever I wanted to, that was like my official desk. Because when working as the receptionist, that was everyone's workspace. Yeah, Um, it was everyone's workspace. mm. So I could never like do what I wanted. So when I was like, oh my God, this is my own desk. These are my drawers. These are everything's mine. It was so weird. My first experience of proper office, I don't mean like, so I had part-time roles in in a recruitment area. And this is a long time ago. This was probably in bachelor's when I was starting off. But that was my first office job. And I remember sharing a desk and it doesn't feel the same when you get into a proper workspace yeah. or office where you have your own desk because you're responsible for that desk and it feels yes. so grown up because um, obviously like you have like you can bring things in that you leave around which I always left my food around or like I had my little like gadgets that I always brought in for myself or like any knickknacks I took in and then you have your little do you have a little drawer yeah I've got like um, like three drawers to the side yeah and I just fill it with random stuff. It's just like, so I got some, like, the first drawer is, like, work stuff. And, like, so other stuff, I just put random stuff in because it's like, I can. It's my, Same. It's my drawer. It's my <laughs> <laughs> this is one thing that is definitely different from working in different space workspaces is that i use a, the drawers or the cabinets below my desk for like loads of personal stuff like i would change shoes and so leave a pair of shoes in oh. there because obviously office where you have to dress up a little bit more formal and professional even if it's like smart casual it still requires you to look a little bit sharp especially if you're dealing yeah. with um, loads of clients coming through if you're having third parties coming in you kind of just want to look your best and that we've always yeah. been told that like to look your best but there's no expectation to be like suit and tie or proper suit dresses and stuff like that it was just look most professional as possible so i would always yeah. had like heels in my little like bottom <laughs> drawer just in case people walked in because i normally wore like a black loafer like a nice like a uh, black loafer so yeah. it's like, not ob- obvious but it was really comfortable with that desk um i think everyone would also agree with this like like with your desk you can display whatever you want on your desktop you can have the computer set however you want you know it's your own environment you can like leave stuff wherever you want and you feel like oh all of a sudden this is mine there's so so much so like pride about it it's like my little baby that's literally how i felt i sat there when he said like oh this is like your desk and i was like oh my desk my desk He was like, oh, okay, you can arrange it however you want to. And so oh, I'm fine. that's cool. And uh, for the first week, though, 
I didn't move Touch. anything. No, nor did I, I in my first job. I literally left it exactly the same how it was. Same. Even though, like, I didn't really like how it was kind of laid out. Like, I wanted, like, the computer screens to be, like, set differently. It was only, like, the beginning of last week um, ah. that I moved it about. So there was the monitor thing. I moved them closer. Yeah. I moved the stationary holder to the other side. And see, like, I... I just literally just, like, I was like, okay, just moving it. started slow. Like, I want to bring stuff in, though, but I don't know what to bring in on a desk. Guys, um, if you're listening, well, yeah. you are listening. <laughs> uh, leave comments down below what I should take to my desk because yeah. I, need to jazz it, I need to jazz it up because I, I don't do know you... what to bring to it. Yeah, we want to know what you guys put on your desk put, at work. Yeah, what you would put on your desk. I mean, this guy we... has a he has a plant on his desk I brought a cactus I brought it in and obviously because it doesn't need that much uh, tending to because I'm not very good at like tending to plants or anything but I think it makes other people want to buy plants (laughs) (laughs) it really did everyone had like a green pot of something and it was just really nice to have everyone to tend to plants but um I think a lot of people bring like um obviously because you can't burn candles in an office that makes sense but photo frames is that something photos of people things like that yeah I was about to say yeah I was because everyone's got like their own little things on the desk like, so that guy has a plant and he brought his own like stationary holder in so like more of like his style and one of them's got like a little bubble head kind of thing of someone I'm not sure I didn't get a good look at it but like yeah they've all done that so I feel like I need to bring my own thing but maybe you should no do fairy right? lights oh do you think fairy is that lights? professional what do you think because like I don't know I heard like those strip lights you can have along your like staircase the light up the stairs you can always oh, have right. I think well, I don't know I, I don't mean, know what, I do, what, like, what is your office rules because I don't want to I and also I'm just <laughs> reaching out for everyone fired. else yeah I don't want you, <laughs> anyone to be fired because they brought strip lights in but I think obviously depending on the office and the like the boss or managers yeah I think I could probably because that'd be quite more of a relaxed firm um, yeah so I could probably get away you're bringing in like fairy lights it's a bit weird to bring fairy lights in I always see fairy lights in someone's bedroom like I've got my fairy lights not fairy lights I don't, I don't know if I get into an office I feel like if you're in a smaller firm you tend to have the tendency to be relaxed a little bit more like obviously I'm not this is not like for everyone this is not saying that every, every small company is really relaxed because the previous yeah, company yeah. I had they were really strict on how clean your table was and so like even oh, though I had my shelving for papers and uh, my pen and rubber holders and whatnot and then most of my like equipment they're like tucked away nice and stack the paper was put to one side they were really strict on how like the table should look like and they sometimes would reorganize your stuff so that just in case like clients will come through because not you don't always yeah. work every day so it makes sense yeah. that when like someone just cleans up your rubbish i also want to know like do you feel like like having your own desk hinders like communication between the people because my desk was so close with people i could just turn around and be like hey i need something to be done can you do it but is that the same as yours like were, were you guys are you guys sat closely together yeah we are kind of sat close because um it is quite a small office that we're in so we are quite close so we're actually sitting because there's four people in like the main area yeah so our desk are sort of facing one another so our desk are pressed are facing one another the same on the other side i literally had uh, computer problems the other day and i just turned to the side and i asked the guy so i was like nice, isn't it? can you help i was like can you help me with my computer please it's nice right <laughs> yeah like it's so nice having people i think that's the benefit of being in an office honestly it's the fact that you can turn around to whoever it is it could be your supervisor it could be the it department it could be the accounts blah 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 it's such an yeah. easy way to communicate just across the room sort of thing obviously dependent like if your company is like on several floors and the departments are separated in different corridors then that makes sense but even then, it's such a convenience just to be able to talk to your, like, neighbours or, like, your um, supervisor who's just across two tables or something like that. What's your, like, um, computer run on? Because I feel like it's all different for different companies. What do you mean, what does it run on? Is it, like, the normal Microsoft stuff and things yeah, like that? Yeah, so it's Microsoft mm. 10, thank God. <laughs> the one I was working with um, back at the GP practice, it was on an old system and it was only recently updated. So it was, like, a couple of months before I left. Whatever it was before yeah. Microsoft 10, it was that one. Mm. That's what it was run on. No, it wasn't even no, because it was Microsoft Eight was before Microsoft Ten, right? Yeah, yeah, it was the one before Microsoft Eight. <laughs> yes, because the thing yeah. is that I think because there was sort of confidential stuff on it on the servers, I think they were scared 
that they were going to lose yeah, all that information, true. like with an update or like say so it might crash or something like that. But that makes sense um, for like uh, for a GP practice though, because there's so much things that yeah. details that they need to keep hold of as well. Yeah, so I think that's why they were scared, but like eventually it got done. And but like, definitely, <laughs> um, yeah, we use Microsoft Ten. What about your company? Because I know you're working remotely. Yeah, I work like, remotely. So my desk is something I bought, so it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually yours. <laughs> yeah, it literally is mine, and it has so much responsibility. It's actually a decent sized table, so it's not too bad. But I I can't i haven't really added any personality to it it's just a very dark yeah. table with you a glass maybe i should have very lights i can do it's my it's my own house i would say you can this your house honestly <laughs> but um we we're a tech company so we're really up to date so in my previous company we um honestly this is how old-fashioned it is and i don't know if many f- um, companies have these anymore but like obviously in certain firms like accounts firm uh law firms and probably several others we had a post room like a proper like old-fashioned pigeonhole yeah. style post room yeah that's and, crazy yeah because it is it was sort of a semi entry role i had but yeah. part of my role was including dealing with the post and literally sorting them out in these little like really old-fashioned like mahogany wood like square oh holes my- God. yeah <laughs> and like that's taking me back to primary school right <laughs> honestly it's like to me it was funny because the room's also really dark <laughs> <laughs> and, and like um you would use like elastic bands to like roll up the post well not roll up but like keep together and you would okay, slot yeah. it into these little holes and obviously the holes had um, people's name on it name so on it. i mean apparently offices still have those sort of things those so uh, post rooms i know i know it's common in like quite a few american companies obviously in american i think it's it. common in like extremely large well not extremely like, like larger firms yeah because mm-hmm. obviously if you're going to have so many people working for you in that mm. company like someone needs to be there to delegate all the um, posts and that especially like say in the legal firm if we're dealing with different clients yeah like, true. you need to have someone dealing with like who th- make sure the post gets to who it's supposed to yeah uh, yeah i think it's definitely with that but in my small company no we don't we're have just getting there. one like post box and then just share it, it out just comes, it comes in through the door oh. <laughs> that's all it is and then you see if it's got i mean i haven't received any post at work because obviously i just started i'll send you something <laughs> <laughs> i will send you my work address please send me some posts i will i'll send you a plant put this on your table please <laughs> But I think, yeah, especially in large companies, you would have that kind of pigeonhole system. Um, for the host. Yeah. But that makes sense, though. It wouldn't make sense for a small company where someone can just collect the post every day. That's true. And just put it on someone's desk. That's true. Like, whoever's there first, they can just pick it up. Yeah, just true. Have a look at that. Because um, my last job, I worked in, like, sort of the canary uh wolf district like you know where it's rammed with yeah. like yeah rammed with offices and companies and they have a huge like post room to sort out the intakes of all posts so it could be dx royal mail different kind of companies yeah. who would come in and, and like ha- drop all their post for different companies they'll be sorted out and then you would have to pick it up you know you know what i had to pick it up with a white sack this is how, like, <laughs> even if it's Canary Wharf, it's still run in a very old-fashioned way. And no, there was no such thing as, and if you guys think there is, there isn't. Um, and especially those for those who watch way too many American dramas or American films, there is no such thing as those metal trolley, white bag trolleys. You I literally... literally uh, <laughs> to say that, like in a little trolley. Exactly. No, it wasn't like that. So you go through the office, someone throw throws... It. Yeah, no, <laughs> nothing like that. Okay, because guys, if you're in working in the UK, you're going to have to carry that white sack. It's not really a white or grey or yellow um, Royal Mail or um, DX sack. And you carry, you sling it over your shoulder or you drag it on the floor because it's way too heavy for me. Because <laughs> it's normally sometimes it's two bags as well. So you would drag oh it God. up in these like sort of like service uh, lifts, like this big metal service. Yeah, lift. It oh was rank. God. And I was wearing like really formal clothing as well. So it looks so <laughs> out of place. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and it was actually good fun because you get to explore the whole building as well. But I think you're right. Like big companies like that have those sort of services in place. Because they need it, they need that sort of they, like yeah. 
lesser sought out and so it's quite commonly known to like as an entry role if you are starting off in a company you can start off in the post room i quite enjoyed it because i got to deal with like obviously this is a legal sector but um i got to deal with loads of like all the big claims straight away all right i got to yeah. read the content straight away before like distributing it to teams because that's it was really crucial that you put it into the right team obviously it's confidential so yeah. leak any details out but like it was com- like it was really important to make sure things were divided in the to right people and the right p- the pigeonhole yeah they're so definitely fun if and don't guys don't get discouraged because it's it sounds like a basic job is a really good skill to organize and manage things like that because yeah. it's a big skill when you come to like do more responsibilities especially even if it's not like actively putting things into certain pigeonholes you actually have to do it in multiple types of like tasks as well in the future it's the key skills that it brings out oh yeah 100 percent. but um one other thing is that um i don't know if you guys have it but do you have a kitchen in your office yeah we've got um like a little kitchenette oh. so it's like just like a little because obviously like i keep saying it is quite small so it's just like a few counters, we've got microwave, a sink, got a fridge and some cupboards at the top. And oh, that is, that's it's so like very, cute. That is very tiny. It's so, so tiny. Cute. But it gets what it needs to be done. And I, I, didn't, I don't need a cooker in there. I'm not making like... Well, we didn't have one. Yeah, we didn't have one. <laughs> but we did... Um, I think what we did have, and I don't know if um, many companies have this, but we had a tea room. I know that's such a British thing, but like it was literally tea in the room. middle. Yeah, no, no, seriously. Like, so all our desks was all laid out here. And then like in this little like divot of like a room, and you, you kind of, it's part of the wall anyway. So you kind of go in and there's two tables in a cupboard and the, the table had like a, you know, kettle, cups, mugs. And yeah. you just fill up the kettle. There was two kettles because there was uh, quite a few of us. And honestly, it's quite convenient if you just want to waste time. And I did a lot of that. Um, <laughs> waste time by just going to the tea room for chit chat, you know, conversation. And but that makes your part of your day go faster, I think. Yeah. It's so I think nice. it's good, like you can stretch your legs as well. Mm. I think one thing for me, even though like the kitchen area isn't that far away from my desk, it's behind you. It's isn't it? just it's it is behind me. <laughs> it's literally I can roll my chair back of the kettle, come back to my desk, keep going, and drink my tea. <laughs> like, that, is, that is what I could do. There's a new level like, of convenience there. <laughs> well, like, even like just to get standing up, I mean, in an office job, you mm. just do tend to sit a lot and just stare yeah. at a screen all day. 100%. So I think getting up, going like to the kitchen, the tea room, whatever it is, just to stretch your legs because I could sit down the whole day, get up. My whole body is hurting from just sitting down so long. No, so, it like, does. Even though I don't drink tea that much, I will still make up my one or two cup of teas a day just mm. so I am standing up and moving just for that little extra bit. Otherwise, my body will hate me for sitting down all day. I always got told off of making a coffee. So my old routine was a hot chocolate coffee combo, like a mocha basically, uh, but I made it yeah. per- myself. But I always got told off because I never finished. It never had the time. Oh, I always had what like that's and, happened to me a couple of times. Right? That never where, like it. I start drinking it. This actually happened with my old job as a receptionist because I worked on Monday, so it's like that is the busiest day. And mm. my um colleague should like make a tea or coffee before we start. And then Monday morning rush, so we're answering the phones constantly, and then the tea would go cold and horrible. So right. I just never got to finish. It. Never touch so it. And yeah. I'll pour it back in the sink And then like One of my like Supervisors who She would come round And she's like Such a lovely lady as well she, And she would like be like Oh you're not gonna drink <laughs> You're not gonna drink that And I was like Oh I haven't had time She was like Darling just sit back And re- drink the hot drink Before it gets cold And she's like And I was like Oh I know But I've got so much work to do And she's like She's like Well that, that's a waste Because you're not gonna drink it Why'd you make it And I was like Because I fancy one Okay I just fancied a drink <laughs> but you don't you do tend to find like in a fast paced environment you tend to forget to drink and eat because your work's just yeah. there like it's displayed in front of definitely, your screen definitely I find a couple of times where I will uh, obviously most companies give you like an hour for lunch because mm. my fr- firm is so small that it's not like a separate area you can go into to have oh, that lunch yeah. so you're sitting at your desk yeah. And I don't mind that. Like I'm comfortable with eating, like with pretty much everyone still around me. But it's still like I I can just eat my lunch and then get back to work rather than taking right. that full hour. 
Yeah. Because I feel like I'm just sitting there. Might as well just get on with some work. Yeah. So that's why recently I've been taking like a book or an e-book, um, take that into work. And then so that makes me spend my whole hour because I feel mm. like, especially if you're working long days. So easy You do need that hour. Yeah, you do need that hour break. Otherwise, mm. you know, you're just going to keep working. And you don't yeah. get paid during lunch, so... I'm not giving them free labor. <laughs> <laughs> so true. I feel like I see so many people do it in, in my old company. And in this company specifically, you work through all your free time. I find that like in the old company that I was working with, they had like, so they had the, the tea room, but they had a separate kitchen like that. You had to get out of the doors. It's a tap and card system. So you had to get out oh, of the doors okay. to like get into the kitchen to actually sit and eat. And I think that's clever because if you don't sit and eat, from your desk you just work through your lunch and it's you such do. a bad habit because you you're entitled to the break take the break yeah definitely. but it's so easily done because your work's right there and then your food's right there and it just seems redundant to not continue your work yeah i was about to say because with me when i first started mm. i felt like that i had to go back to work as soon as i finished eating just because like to make that good impression but now that even though it's only been be like a month coming up yeah i feel like no i need that break to myself even if i'm sitting at my desk even if i do see emails coming in in the inbox Mm. i'm gonna pretend ignore them i'm I'm so bad it's my it's my out it's my hour lunch you know i i just have to have a break because i hope i'm bad I'm really bad at it because I um I had the tendency to want to do work and so I'll be like off oh, you know put that to one side I'll eat it later and then then just dive straight into work and it's such a bad habit. Yeah, bad habit. I think um with my old job there was a separate area that I could go to mm. sit have my lunch relax in, and that was obviously so much better because I didn't feel like everyone was staring at me eating like my sandwich, <laughs> <laughs> and that was like more relaxed and I was like could go on my phone. You know, I watch videos, go on social media, where I feel like if there isn't that sort of area, you do feel like you have to do something productive. Yeah, or it feels weird to sit at your desk and do nothing. What I want to know Mm. is when you first started an office job, how were you like, because like I said, I felt like I had to constantly working through like my lunch breaks or whatever. How was it when you first started working in the office? Like, what was it like? That very first time, like you're hired, first day, what was that like? Well, first week is always training. I think it's training for most people. So yeah. I obviously got to meet the whole team and got to talk to them and then they trained me and vice versa, give them a little bit of facts about me and who I am. But I think with the first time ever, even during a new um, company or even just like actually looking around the office, it's always intimidating because yes. you don't know where anything is. You know, you yeah. walk around and you're like, oh, oh that's where the the tea goes or oh that's where like um the print is but even after my second third week i still don't know where anything was <laughs> <laughs> it's true the office is not huge it's just like you're not familiar with the territory uh, the space and the vicinity yeah. and therefore you start to like have to scour through the whole vicinity to look for, for something and you can always ask but they're gonna be like yeah. well but it's obvious scary, it's there. Though. yes yeah, so but scary. I say, well, that's scary when you talk to someone cause, like, <laughs> especially because you're brand new and like even though they're not going to expect you to know where no. any of these things are it's just still scary of going to somewhere like oh, oh yeah, can you just show me where this is can you show me where that is yeah sure. i know when i first started working i didn't make a cup of tea for like two weeks because i didn't <laughs> no know which cupboard the tea bags were in i just didn't make a cup of tea i was like i don't know where they are and even though I watched people like getting the tea bags in and out of the cupboard, okay, I still thought, yeah. like, what about if I go to it and it's not in there? That's it's one thing. That's one thing when you um join an office, and I think everyone's experienced that. And please leave it in the comment below if you ever, ever, ever come across this. Because when you start in a new place and it's specifically in the office and you don't know where things are, you watch people like a hawk, you go, Yes. Oh that's where the paper is okay and then you go over there and you go like you try to act normal and you go pull it out yeah. and everything you go okay yeah i was right <laughs> push it back in everything is all hunky dory <laughs> but like the, the first time when you don't know where something is you're too timid to ask and i don't know why this is and then some companies do help you out by labeling things so you're like okay thank god it's there thank god it's there <laughs> but some companies like my old companies i didn't know where like the squash is you know like the juice or squash that you yeah, yeah. dilute with water someone asked me because i had to do an inventory check she was like go check where the squash is <laughs> I was too scared to say, what do you mean, where is it? (laughs) 
<laughs> I went into the tea room and I was like, okay, is it in this cover? No. Is it in that cover? No. And it was behind me all along. But it was just funny Hello. because it was like a, a proper childish game which you had to it was like literally find and seek the objects of. And sometimes you feel stupid because you could have just asked and, and cut the amount of time you waste. Yeah, you literally could have just... Well, I think, I don't know, not, I think it's just that first couple of times, it's just the nerves of asking. And then, because they obviously hired you because they saw potential in you, and it's like, oh, I've they no hired potential. me for doing this job, and I can't even find the paper or the squash. Like, come on. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, I've got a potential. They hired me to do this. Okay, the least I could do is just figure it out. I think, like, you don't want to, like, disappoint them by, like, asking questions. Like, yeah. Like, where's the toilet paper? Huh? Because, obviously, in the interview, you tell them that you're capable and yeah. that you have all these qualities. <laughs> and then you go <laughs> the first day and it's like, well, how do I do this? How do I do that? But they obviously expect that. They always yeah, they do. Questions, especially entry level jobs. You're not going to have any most experience or anything no. like that. So it's just like, but still, you I come in questions. with that expectation of like, oh, they think they think I know something. <laughs> I don't know and anything. Then, literally, that's what happened to me on my first my first day. Like, he was asking me questions because um, I'm in, like in the legal sector, so they ask me questions about certain things. And I've done my um, undergrad and I've done my masters. Yeah. And so they were asking me so many questions and it's like um I do know the answer but uh, just give me one <laughs> second I promise because I'm so nervous as well like in my brain it's just like it wasn't working when he was like first talking through things with me and asking me these questions he asked me a question that I 100% knew the answer to <laughs> I just told him like I didn't even think I said I don't know the answer and I'm just like no I do and I just felt <gasps> so good afterwards I oh, do the opposite. Like, oh, dude, I, oh, no, I'd say I that get everything. They're like, do you understand? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, okay, what's next? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, one time what happened was he was explaining this new kind of process to me, like this next step after I've mm-hmm. done like, and he was explaining to me. However, I didn't know that he was going to be teaching me this yet. So I went in without a paper and pen. I sat oh. down. I sat down and he started going through the process and I was like, mm-hmm, okay. Like at any time, I probably could have said, oh, excuse me, can I just get a pen and paper? I just, you know, make yeah. sure I get everything correct. No, like it was an hour. It went on for an hour and I was like, mm, okay. And he was like, okay, now go off and do this. Let's see if you can get the same things. And I sat at my desk. I can't remember anything he said. So I was just trying to work backwards. Okay, so this is what they got. Right, maybe add this to it. Maybe take this away from it. I was literally, and then he would pass me. And I said to him, look, I'm on this part. Where do you go next? And then like he went through the whole process again. But thank God, obviously he was at my desk. So I had my pen and paper and I took like notes. And I was like, I was literally, it was the worst moment of my life. And so now on, from like these little like first day, first like week mistakes. Yeah. Every time he calls me into his office, I have a pen and paper. I don't even care. I don't care if he's going to just say one thing to me. I'm taking a pen and paper. Like, oh, you, you did a good job. You're going to write that? <laughs> oh, I did a good job. He said you. I did a good job. <laughs> I find that like I'm too scared to say I don't understand because like again yeah. like you think oh you know you told them oh I can do this I can do that I'm so good at everything yeah. and then they tell you do you know what you're doing yeah no <laughs> don't know what I'm doing <laughs> sitting there like oh man help me it is so scary like I keep saying like they obviously hired you because you're capable and because they see you working in this environment. And then you go down, just like, nope, nope. Like, hey, what's going on? No. Nope. Okay. The other day, he, he, um, I was asked to do something. I've only been there a month. He only asked me to do something. Like, we have these, like, kind of tasks that we do, like, with a case. Mm-hmm. And so you've got to follow up a task. And he was like, oh, Harina, you need to check the task. You need to action them. So I went into my task and I just stared at it the whole pretty much for like 10 minutes because I had no idea what to do with it. I could have just asked him because it, I've only been there, like, less than a month. Yeah. I could have just asked I could have just asked him or like anyone around me, you know, it didn't even have to be the boss. It could have just been someone else that like my level or just a bit higher up. Yeah. I just asked him like, how do I do this? I didn't do that. I just stared at him. <laughs> and I was like, it was getting towards the end of the day. And he uh, he was like, 
oh, I did she action the task? And I was like, um, no, not yet. However, can you, I'm just not sure how to um, action it. How would you action it? <laughs> I'm like, you weren't like that. And he told me. And I was like, okay, and I made a mental note. And as soon as he left my desk, I wrote it all down. Yeah. And, like what he did. But it's so scary when like, they give you like an extra responsibility or they start giving you more work. Yeah. And you're just like, for oh, sure. what do I do now? Because yeah. I was just starting getting used to like the previous stuff that like I just learned. So I was used uh... to that. I was in my rhythm doing that. Then they added this on top. And it was just like, um, sorry, you want me to do what now? <laughs> <laughs> Quick maths. Quickly, come on. <laughs> It's so scary, but that's the what it's like working at office straight away. It is so nerve wracking. Yeah, Whether you are so qualified, not qualified, no matter what level you're going into, it will always be scary or like nerve wracking. Definitely. And people will always be, oh, should I ask this? Should I not ask this? Like, what should I do? But, you know, just ask the question. Yeah, ask moral of the story, ask the question. Ask Don't questions. waste your time. <laughs> but the thing is, like, I've actually learned, I've come to learn with this in my current company is that if you don't ask they think that you know so you're not gonna lose out if you ask especially because my um job is now remote i can't turn to someone and be like Mm. did i do this right like it's not possible for me so i have to reach out to people regardless if it's my supervisor my like someone who's next like same position as me and just like oh just say, oh, I need help. What, what do I do with this one? Please just give me a call and let me talk me through it. Because it's the only way for you to develop. And yeah. I think that's the perk with the office. Because if they see you struggling, they're going to help you. They are. They really will. And like you said, that like, I can always literally just turn to someone. Mm. I'm like, oh, can you help me with this? Because obviously you can't work remotely. Yeah. That's what it's like to work in the office. Yeah. When you first started out, when asking questions, you need also, to... Yeah, another one, the moral of the story is bring bring pen and paper. Don't forget it. Always bring pen and paper <laughs> when the boss calls you in. Yeah. Always. Because it, it was the other day, he just wanted to show me something. And, but I brought a pen and paper. I didn't need to write anything down. But about if he showed me something now. else to do. Yeah. That's definitely need. Take a pen and paper. Yeah. It always shows that you're like actively learning as well. Like the fact that yeah. you're willing to write it down just because you would forget. Even though for you, you're like... Well, by the time I leave your office, I would have forgotten everything. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I think that's what happens as well when you first start. Yeah. That you get so much information. Yeah, you do. And then as soon as you go out of the office or go sit back at your desk, it's just like, okay, what just happened? Literally, because you get overload of information on the first you day. Do. You really do. Especially and training. It's just like, definitely training. You get overload of information and it's just like, what do I do now? It's also like really funny because it doesn't matter what position you are. Like you said, like whether even if you're going coming into a senior role, you still go through that sort of first day, first week of the office, like fright. Oh, I don't know where anything yeah. is. Is where how how do I make a tea? I I know some people who are like really brazen and they get stuck in right where they're like, oh, can I ask you where the tea is? You're it's like, all about like making your first few weeks the best for you. I find like, if especially yeah. when you're joining a company, and this could be just like this can just be like a temporary role to a full time role, whatever role you're taking. Just make the most out of your first few days or first few weeks because yeah. you never know. You might need to know that information that you found out in week one down the line and it's just easier for you to make your work life as easier as possible like for me like i've learned to just delve in and ask people even if it's the most stupid question like i literally did ask someone like oh i can't find the sort of like permanent markers because we're i think we're trying to redact things the old-fashioned way because it was tiny like bits to redact and i was like i can't find the permanent markers and literally and this sounds so stupid but it was right in front of me and the moment the girl showed me i felt like in the complete dunce a complete idiot but the point of asking is not because you're thick or because you're stupid. It's just because you can't see it or you've you've never seen it in that certain area. And therefore, it gives yeah. you more information about where you are working and your environment. Can I ask you a quick question, actually? Because I really want to know this. Mm-hmm. You know where your office is? Is it located in a, like, a really busy, like, food, like, sort of um, quick buy sort of stuff? Like, you know, like, uh, takeaway food or, like, you know, boots no, um, with the meal not, deals and things like that? Not really. Um... It's kind of just located outside the town centre. So it's mm. in a quiet, it is in a very quiet area. And I think it's like a five minute walk to the town centre. Oh. So obviously if I did want to go get like a 
Mildor or something like that. Mm. It's not that far. Mm. But yeah, it's quite a quiet area. I think it's quite nice because you have that walk because in for like city workers and I think a lot of people who are listening probably are working in the main city or was working in the main city would know how convenient it is um to have like yeah. restaurants and like shops and food eateries around you or right below you in my case but another point is i'm really intrigued to know like not just yourself arena but for people who are at home listening in with us can you let me know like do you take your pack lunch in to work uh. as an adult or do you buy food out because i was always a pack lunch person I just I obviously I'm I just a packed lunch person. Yeah. yeah. I always lunch all yeah, the way. You can bring in whatever you want instead of buying it. Like, yeah. It's honestly you save a lot of money mm. as well. Because you know, you say three pound fifty, four pound where depending where you're going, you're gonna meal it mm. all yeah. every day. It adds up, especially oh, if you're certainly. already paying for travel. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah that's a lot of expenses. Yeah. You guys have you it's have a, have a microwave expenses. as well. So you can have hot food. Yeah, just my club. Club, yeah. Yeah. I definitely prefer a packed lunch just because lunch. Yeah, yeah, the food feels a lot fresher because you know where it's coming from and you've made it. When it comes to like especially in the winter where it's really cold, I like having my food heated up so I can have hot food to go and yeah. eat. If you're if I'm rushed for time, I think it's convenient to have shops and you know, eatery place to like pick up a quick meal deal or like or sushi or whatever you want. Yeah. Um really I do by. love a meal deal though. That is really? I do like I love meal deals. What do you go um, for? I, okay, right. I don't want anyone judging me in the comments or anything <laughs> like this. Okay. I just get the standards. <laughs> Probably chicken and bacon or chicken and sweet corn sandwich. Okay. Like it, yeah. like maybe like a Lucas A, the sports one, not the fizzy one. Some okay. sort of like orange juice kind of vibe. Yeah. Okay. Start off in a good crisp. Start off in a good crisp. Nice. nice Usually nice. McCoy's if they have them. That is mine. Guys, let me know in the comments if that's the world's most basic meal deal ever. <laughs> and let me know what you guys have for your meal deals. I feel Definitely. Like it's such an important thing to know which what meal deals people have what do you have as a meal what deal? do i have my meal deal i normally go for meal deals i normally just buy like a lunch you know what i mean like a just a box of sushi or if i'm going for like oh you want a dough yeah, just one thing <laughs> but i do have a i do have my selections when it comes to a meal deal i always go for plowman's sandwich like a, you know ham and cheese sort of like classic bit of pickle yeah. please that or like i would go for an egg or salmon one like a salmon with a... Uh, Where are you going to get your meal deal that do salmon? A salmon... Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Tesco down the road. I don't know where you're going. And then drink, I agree, like something like fruit, juice base or like a... A lemonade but sometimes if i'm feeling really 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 in the mood for it like m- maybe a fizzy drink but I, I, it's so yeah. rare for me to choose one of those yeah and then oh snacks is kind of hard because i normally go for the bars i bar chocolate or something yeah. or like um a really nice like what's it called is it sunny bakes the bake oh, crisp right yeah that's me sunny bites or something sunny, sunny but yeah something like that so yeah Summer. guys let us know what you guys have for your meal deals and what's the best and tell us whether our one's common or not because i know like people also have like different ideas of what they like and flavors and stuff like that but definitely want to know what <laughs> the most common <laughs> meal deal selection is i don't think it's salmon personally <laughs> don't think it's all right don't, you know, don't make it personal i like salmon i'm just right? saying i'm just saying <laughs> never been to a tesco and a salmon before i don't know oh no, okay fair enough. Do you know what else i really like like the chicken and bacon baguette sandwiches that they do in tesco that's like, part of the meal deal i don't know like, um... instead of the sandwich that's quite nice oh I sometimes get the sushi. I like sushi. I've mentioned that quite a few times. Yeah. <laughs> also, I really want to know, like, does your does anyone's company out there, and also including yours, Harina, do they provide like certain drinks, like other, other than coffee and teas? Because that's common, right? Coffee and teas are yeah, the basic that's two. Normal. Yeah, and water, of course. Uh, at the current role, if I asked them for something, say mm. if I wanted orange squash or something like that, I feel like they would provide it for me. Mm. But no, they just get the standard coffee. So I feel like that's what they drink. So that's what they've got. Yeah, fair. Because I think, obviously, if they were more squash drinkers, they would have squash there. No, it's just the standard coffee, tea. They have mm. quite a lot of sections of teas, though. 
They got like green tea, peppermint tea. They got all kinds of teas. Only recently have I become a tea person. I usually go for a coffee and um, black coffee or a mocha. But um, my old company used <laughs> to do squashes, all sorts of types of squashes as well. And then they did. They were really fair on everyone. They did different types of milk as well, like vegan option、oh. milks, and then like the normal, you know, full fat or semi fat milk. It was weird because we did have a split, like a fifty fifty of staff who did prefer. Vegan to normal milk. All、oh, right. Yeah, and then we had sparkling water as well. <laughs> no one drank it though, so it was really weird to just to buy it. We did it. We had variety of teas as well, but there were some people、yeah. who just they they couldn't have certain teas, or like they obviously didn't enjoy the the type of teas that the work would offer, and so people brought things in, which is quite common actually in offices to bring your own things、yeah. like mugs and tea bags and、uh, drinks and like whatever you wanted. A lot of my、um, colleagues kind of hid their own honey pot. <laughs> That's such a random <laughs> thing, but like in their like own cabinet below their desk, it's like they had their own like jar of honey or like a a, a bottle of squeezy honey because they, none of them wanted like white sugar, which is fair. I brought in um this is how you know I'm such a foodie. I brought snack bars like fruit and nut snack bars because you get hungry in the morning because you don't eat lunch、yeah. until like some ridiculous like twelve o'clock. I ate lunch at one thirty two, so、yeah. by the time it hit by eleven o'clock, I wanted a. A hot drink and、uh, had a fruit bar, or snack, or nut bar, or chocolate bar. But people did hide food. It was really interesting, actually. I was say a couple of the guys at work. They've got a snack drawer, so their bottom drawer. Do you know, like the deep drawers. Yeah,、Filled、yeah. Snacks. Yeah,、Filled、same. Snacks. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm gonna start doing that.、Yeah. Just bring in some snacks. Yeah, there was a like we had a couple of colleagues who are like gym head proper, like muscle、oh, gym、yeah. heads. Had like Tupperwares of protein powder and rice <laughs> and canned meats because they get hungry really quickly, so they just eat. They constantly yeah, they just have eat. to eat a lot as well,、yeah. like to keep like the calories up and so they can like build muscle and stuff. Yeah, like so it was really interesting to just pull everyone's like personal drawer, which is normally the bottom one. Always the bottom one because it's that one's the deepest. Exactly, it's the deepest. So you can so... just put the snacks in. <laughs> So what you guys learn of me is that I keep a pair of high heels <laughs> and snack nut bars and chocolate bars <laughs> in my bottom one. <laughs> That's one perk of having your own desk is that you're allowed to have whatever you want in it and whatever you want to personalize it. Especially in、um, companies that are not so strict in how they lay out their desk or tables, it's really really fun just to like. Personalize your、um, desk for yourself. Well, I want to know is when you first started your job, like your previous job, because、mm. um, obviously you work remotely now. What was the office where, like, because when I first started, just like a more professional job, I was looking at all the office wear online,、mm. watching like YouTube videos about people's office wear. Because I loved, I love office wear clothes. I think it's so like fancy, so cool. But I end up buying loads. But what was it like for you? Um. Well, now that I'm working remotely, I can wear whatever I want, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it can be pajamas some days. My previous jobs, I always had office wear clothes. I mostly wore quite nice, like, and also because this is provided the fact that we worked in Canary Wharf, so there was a standard there that you had to wear、yeah. very like sharp office wear. Um, I wore a lot of like really loose blouses because I really didn't like being uncomfortable at the top, like. Anything tight on the top was really uncomfortable, but then I wore like very tight trousers or either tight trousers or boot cut trousers, like a flare at the bottom with heels、oh, okay. and like um fitting um blazer and normally a scarf like a a cravat, a cravat. Sorry, <laughs> no, because it just meant that I could cover up my chest because I was always like. Careful about that because a lot of my blouse came down quite low, so wearing a cravat、oh, covers it, so you don't feel so like. I mean, don't get me wrong, I wasn't, I'm not voluptuous, so I don't have anything to show off. But like, <laughs> it was just nice to like a piece to tie in with my clothing without it being too showy. Yeah,、um, yeah. But that was because it was in the winter. In the summer, I wore just very loose like linen shirts. A linen、yeah. shirts or blouse with a, again trousers, but no blazer, and、uh, a very smart like watch and things like that. Small trimmings, but really basic, very、really、comfortable clothes actually. A lot of my clothes I bought、yeah. places where it would be like I knew it would be stretchy. I don't, I can't. I'm not very good with tight clothing. Like pencil skirts is not for me. Oh right, see, I used to wear pencil skirts. I didn't. I, I didn't、really、do that. Like the whole fancy like. 
black skirt, white blouse, black blazer. Uh, I used to do that. But now I think fashion and office wear have definitely evolved. Definitely, yeah. So I like now I've got like grey, kind of more kind of suits. Mm-hmm. So I've like got um grey, black and like a khaki green trousers, and like yeah. just different types of blouses. But I think because my, obviously it depends on the type of office you're working in, but uh, mine's kind of smart casual. So I can mm. afford to wear like, yeah. you know, just like a normal jacket yeah. rather than mm-hmm. a blazer. So I think it can be like slightly more comfortable, but I think that's the thing people need to be aware of when they first start an office job Yeah, is don't go out and spend tons of money Yeah, when you first Definitely. start the job. Because, Read the office. Uh, yeah, definitely get a feel of what everyone else is wearing. Yeah. And then base your clothes on that because you don't want to buy clothes and they're so uncomfortable and no one else is like wearing the same kind of thing. Yeah, that's true. Because like, you don't want to go smart casual when everyone's su- such that like, business wear. And start... then you don't want to do like vice versa. You know yeah, I, mean? I think that's a really good point. Like start in the middle. Like don't be too smart and don't be too casual. Like a nice yeah. middle ground. So then if you know for the first day you see everyone wearing. Because that was the thing is in my company, it was a good split in the middle again. Um, and some oh, people right. would like quite be quite casual in what they wear. Like a simple sh- work shirt and trousers and then a normal coat. Oh, okay. And that's okay. Like I don't think that's too bad. There was no tie. But then there was other people who were like strictly blazer, tie, shirt and trousers. Or for females, like proper office wear, like pencil skirt with a blouse tucked in with a blazer. Yeah, and yeah. then sometimes they're clipped to hold in the top. And I, for me, I went with the middle ground because I wanted to see how strict they were if they were going to come around and be like, Caitlin, please, you know, recorrect your the way you dress because it's not professional enough. And they didn't. And, they, and so I went with the sort of like lazy <laughs> formal wear. <laughs> So everything was comfortable, yeah. but it was still considered as formal wear. Yeah. And I loved it. I, I think didn't lie. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely a thing you need to look at as well. Because when you buy office wear, it needs to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. Because I think you're going to be in that for majority of the day. Oh, 100%. So whether you're sitting down or like walking around, you need to be comfortable. Yeah, because like, say if you get, you know, like a, like a tight fitted or straight fitted, like a blazer, yeah. You're going to be so uncomfortable in that. You need to find, like, a good mix between, obviously, being professional mm-hmm. and being, like, comfortable. Yeah. Because you okay. can get the, you can get both in the same type of clothes. So it's just about oh, yeah. like, trying to trying to find that right fit. When you work in the office, they're obviously standards that have to be part. Yeah. And so I think trying to find that good mix. But I prefer wearing kind of smart casuals just because you can get closer to casual. <laughs> So, you know, the little extra trimmings, like yeah. a more comfortable jacket rather than a blazer. Mm. Definitely, because it is more comfortable just be sitting in an office all day, just in you know, it's uncomfortable strip wearing business wear. Yeah, exactly. It's really uncomfortable wearing strip business wear. And I think also, like, shoes is really important. Yes. Because <laughs> you're walking on yeah. Let us know down below what if you actually prefer because I know some people do prefer uh, strict business wear. Yeah. So let us know in the comments down below if you're more of a ca- smart casual mm-hmm. or a business wear type of gal exactly. guy. Yeah. Human being. Yeah. <laughs> let us know also if you your workplace doesn't have a uniform or like a, a specific oh. requirement for formal or casual wear and you can wear whatever you want because we would love to hear your thoughts and experiences of working in an office yeah and you know this is obviously again this is just our personal experience that we're talking from yeah definitely um, so keep that in mind when listening <laughs> definitely and let us know like join in you know comment below and uh, follow all our social medias and always direct message us to let us know your personal opinion as well <laughs> So follow us at Waiki Society on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And um, and we would love to hear from you. And definitely, I know Harina will join in when it comes to um, you guys asking us any questions or like you have any yeah. points you want to raise. And definitely communicate with uh, one another. It'll be so nice to hear what you guys think about, you know, day in life in the office and your first day at the office. Definitely let us know um, your meal deal selection. You know, that's the important agenda for us both. We that really want to know. I think I want want to know what do you guys <laughs> eat for your meal deals yeah so i don't think it's salmon caitlin okay let's not let's not make it personal <laughs> <laughs>
You um, buy us lunch. Yeah, <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> so the next episode for this podcast, we will be discussing training and development and the importance of training and development. I'm Caitlin. I'm Harina. See you guys soon. <laughs> See you guys. Thank you.